Hey there, I hope you're well. Last week was Adobe's big event where we get to learn about all of the new Adobe apps and features. Well, in this video, I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of the top new features in Photoshop 2020. Hey there, welcome to the video. If you're into Photoshop design or illustration, consider subscribing to the channel because that's what we're all about. Now, last week there were some new improvements to Photoshop for the desktop and there's a new version of Photoshop for the iPad. And if you wanna learn more about the new version of Photoshop for the iPad, you can click up here to watch that video or check out the link in the description below. But anyway, back onto Photoshop for the desktop. There are a ton of new feature upgrades and I'm gonna run through my top seven. So let's get to it. Okay, so you can access the new object selection tool by pressing W on your keyboard or by coming over here to the toolbar and selecting the little icon here. Now, when I first upgraded to Photoshop 2020, this was not in my toolbar and I had to come down here, click the three little buttons there, uh, three little dots, and then edit toolbar and then reset my toolbar and then it reappeared. So just a quick note if you don't see that after your update. Now to use this tool, it's super simple. All you need to do, to do is drag around the subject. You'll see Photoshop will analyze it and it will draw a pretty accurate line around the subject. Now it's not perfect, don't get me wrong, but we can easily improve that just by subtracting. So if you want to subtract, simply hold down the Alt or Option key select around and you'll see Photoshop will do a pretty good job. So we'll do under this arm too. And you'll see it's added that quite nicely. Now around the hair here, it missed it out completely, but we can just simply hold down shift and then draw around the hair. And you'll see it does an okay job. Now this will get you started. Obviously you'll want to improve this. You'll want to uh, improve and refine the mask. But overall, it's a pretty good cutout. And this works even on more complex images. So that's pretty cool, but next up there are new alignment tools. So I'll just show you again another example using this photo of this little pug dog wearing a blanket. It's quite a complex image in terms of there's a lot of detail in the background, there's some stuff poking around in the foreground. So I'm just going to quickly draw around him now, see what happens. And as you can see, that's a pretty good selection. I mean, you know, it could do some work to improve it, but overall, as a starting place, that's a great selection in my opinion. There's also another little feature I wanna show you here. And to show you this, I'm just gonna deselect the image there. I'm gonna create a new layer, and let's just fill that with a bright color so you can see what I'm about to show you. Now, let's select the background copy of the dog again. And if you go to your property section, if you scroll down, you'll see there's some new quick actions and you've got a new box which says remove background. So let's press that and you'll see the magic work here. So look at that. It's selected the object. It's cut the object out from the background. And overall, I think that's a pretty good job. That's a pretty good starting place. You know, if you're creating a thumbnail or if you just want to speed up your workflow, I think this is a great new tool. There's also some new zoom tricks. So let me show you these. So this is Zoom Tricks, and what I like about this is before when you were working on a Photoshop project, if you wanted to zoom in and out of different items, you would kind of use the hand tool, you would look at that, then you would maybe zoom out and you would come back down here and zoom back in. What you can do now, uh, it's a little keyboard shortcut, but if you hold Alt and then Z or Z, and then you can click onto the layer that you want to zoom into. So I'm gonna click Canon camera or A6400, or let's go up to, titles or the Sony Alpha logo and it just zooms into those areas as you click the layer. So this is going to save you a ton of time getting around your Photoshop files. Now if you're like me you probably love the content aware fill features but there's been some really nice upgrades to this so let me show you these. So there's a nice change to content aware fill and this is a feature that I use a lot so I'm really pleased to see this. So let's just say we wanna get rid of this guy here in the background. Uh, what you would normally do is select around the area and then go to edit and then content aware fill and you have this new dialog box that pops up and it just allows for a few more sampling options. So auto is Photoshop's automatic selection. And to be honest, this does a really great job. They've really improved this too. And it does a fantastic job almost every time uh, since I've been testing it. But you now have the option for a rectangular sa sampling area or a new custom area. So let's just say uh, it was a little bit more difficult from this 
um, image and you wanted to maybe select around here, select a bit of the trees, but you didn't want to maybe, let's say, select the people that are next to him. So we're going to go right up against that edge. We're going to go above him and then we'll just see how this does. There we go, and it's done a pretty good job. So I always find that Automatic does a brilliant job, but if you're working with a photo which is particularly tricky or you have objects in the photo that are overlapping, you may find the new custom feature works really well. Now we'll move on to the new layer properties and tools here. So there's also been some really great updates to the properties panels in almost every area of Photoshop, but particularly I find in the text area. So I'm going to write some basic text here. And usually if you wanted to get all your paragraph properties up, you would have to kind of come to window and one by one go to paragraph, paragraph styles and so on. But now if you go to properties here on the right, you can see now you've got a few more options than before. So you've got the transform tools, you've got character selection, uh, you've got the paragraph options, there's a few more if you uh, expand each menu, type options, and then you've also got options here for stylistic sets. So for example, this font I'm using is uh, an open font, and uh, if we untick stylistic set one and click on three, watch what happens to the text can see it switches to that stylistic set which is really cool so you've got all of those options now within properties you've also got the option to convert directly to a shape so let's select this text we can click convert to shape and there we go we now have a vector shape we can use in our Photoshop PSDs there's a small update to the lens blur feature let me show you this so this is an update to the lens blur feature. So I've made a duplicate of the background layer. I've created a new alpha channel in there. And then if you go to filter, blur, and then go to lens blur, you'll see this has been updated. Uh, it's a little bit faster than it was before. I'm using a 13 inch MacBook Pro, so it's not super fast. But what you can do uh, under here, you can go to depth map and you can select the alpha channel that we've created and you can set set focal point you can click that so I can click the mountains here and as I do that you'll see that the stones at the front end of the beach here go out of focus if I click the stones then you'll notice the mountains go out of focus and this stays in focus so it's just a cool new way you can create a great depth of field effect in Photoshop and this next feature is really cool if you do any kind of gifs or animations now you can save as a gif and let me show you how that works Okay, so this is a cool new feature for you GIF creators. Now, what I've got here is a little video of me being silly. I've got this as a GIF in text. And what we can do now is just simply go to File, Save As. We'll be greeted with this new Cloud Documents section or on your computer. I'm gonna go to Save on your computer. And then I'm gonna go to my Creative Cloud Documents, save that as GIF2. And we're gonna change this to the all new Save As GIF. And we're going to click save you'll get a few options here as usual to change the quality and the settings of your export i'm just going to leave it to the standard settings click ok and then within a few seconds we should have this saved out now if we go to finder we can see this new gif is now saved out so there we go. They are my seven top new features in Photoshop CC 2020. And they're the features that I love. Have you noticed any new features or tried anything new in Photoshop that you think is really cool? Let me know in the comments section below. Well, thanks for watching the video. And as I mentioned earlier, if you want to see our full feature review or quick look on Photoshop for the iPad, you can do that by clicking up here or checking out the link in the description below. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.